Hello, so I have a follow-up video to the Sudokult discussion number six. So if you haven't watched that, I do recommend watching it. Um, you don't have to because I'll go over the, the main concept that I'm following up on, but if you uh, want context for this, I definitely recommend watching that. I'll put a, I'll put a link in the description and I'll have a little thing pop up up there. Uh, you know how YouTube works. So what this follow-up is, is Philip presented this puzzle, and there was a specific technique called the tri-value autagon that was used to solve this puzzle. Uh, this is in the Sudokult puzzle pack, so I guess if you don't want spoilers on how to solve this puzzle, um, do give it a try first. Uh, but it does pretty much require this specific technique, and a lot of people have trouble with it. And the way Philip had proved the um, sort of configuration for the tri-value autogon was uh, what he called bifurcation. I called it trifurcation. <laughs> um, it wasn't a very nice proof. And so we put it out there that, hey, if you can find a better way to prove this, uh, we'd like to know about it. And uh, Ryakusha actually came through with a really, really elegant proof that actually allows us to expand this further and recognize it more easily. So I'm going to go over all of that in this video. Hopefully it won't be too long of a video, but I'm going to start by show, reminding you guys what exactly this tri-value autogon type thing was. So let's let's get started on that. So this is the puzzle uh, which Philip presented. It's called Trillium. And if you look, there's these very suspicious givens in these boxes, as well as potentially box five. So if you look, they all have one through six given. That means these empty spaces here, they have to be seven, eight, nine. I'm going to just color those uh, in a green color just to make them stand out. And then here, if you look at box five, we actually do have a bunch of threes looking in, these three threes. So there is a hidden three in the box. And so the rest of the, the values, based on the givens, it need to be five, seven, eight, nine. And these two C5s. So th this five and this five CN. So that's what we're left with. And the question is, can this be a five? So if this were a five, what would happen? And we end up with the formation that I called Thor's Hammer, which seems to have caught on, because it kind of looks like Thor's Hammer. And so I'm going to call this the Thor's Hammer strategy, where this configuration of triples is impossible. And I will go through a proof of that later, but I wanted to show that. So that this 5 here, if I undo a little bit, this 5 here, this little candidate here, is preventing the puzzle from being impossible. If I eliminate this 5, now our puzzle is impossible. There's no solutions. Therefore, this is a 5, this is not a 5, and we can continue with our solve, and it's a uh, you know, fairly simple solve from here. So why is that formation impossible? Well, Philip had gone through essentially a proof starting with, okay, well, if we fill 7 here, and now we go through all that, you can watch the Sudoku video if you want his proof, um, but it wasn't very satisfying, as I said. So I'm going to go over... Um, what a much nicer proof of that looks like. So let's go move on to our sandbox. And let's talk a little bit about triples in um, bands and stacks a little bit. So a band would be a row of three boxes. A stack would be um, a column of three boxes. And let's just put one, two, three here. So it doesn't really matter where we put it in the box as long as it's going, it's filling the three rows of the box. So like I could put three here if I wanted to. It doesn't really matter. Let's just do it all on a line. So now the question is, if I were to have one, two, three vertically here, how can I fill it? Well, if I put a two here, then now this cell here sees a two and a three. It must be a one and this must be a three, right? And then here I can put a three here. This is force. This is force. So if we wanted one, two, threes down uh, these these rows, right? There, there'd, be, there'd be other ways to fill this, but if we wanted them filling the three rows, that's how we'd have to do it. And if you look... We can, we can talk about something called, that I'm calling cyclical parity. So if we read top to bottom, this is 1, 2, 3. This is 2, 3, 1. This is 3, 1, 2. And they share the same property that cyclically they all increase. So the 2, 1, 2, 3, you can see how that's increasing. Now the 2 increases to 3, and then 3 rolls back around to 1, but it's increasing to 1. right? It's not decreasing to 1, because to decrease it would have to go back to 2 first. And then the 3 is increasing to 1, and then that increases to 2. So we're increasing. So why can't I fill it 
decreasing. Like, why can't I do 3, 2, 1, for example? Well, as you can see, the 2s would clash. So if you think about it, in order to preserve the cyclic parity, I need to rotate the digits through. So I need to either, you know, um, I, I have to move where every digit is. And that, that obviously makes sense. If I don't move where one of the digits is, then that digit's going to clash in the row. So if I were to swap just two of these numbers, like two and one, that seems to work for those two, but then now where does the three go? I mean, obviously I can hide it over here somewhere, but if we want it in the same column, that's going to clash, so I can no longer place the three. So I can't just swap two of the digits. I can't swap three and two because the one stays where it is. So I have to cycle all three digits. And by swapping two of the digits, I've actually now caused this sequence to be a decreasing sequence. Right, because if we think um, about one decreasing to zero, that wraps around to three, and then three decreases to two, and then if we go back up to the top, two decreases to one. Right, so that's a decreasing sequence. So every sequence vertically is if if I have that triple vertically passing all three rows is either going to be cyclically increasing or cyclically decreasing, and so that that would be what I'd call a parity. Um, of the cycle. And within a band, if the triples are going to be all lined up like this, where they all span three rows, they're all going to have to have the same cyclical parity as each other. So now we can do the exact same argument. We can just rotate it 90 degrees. So I won't go too in depth here, but if we look left to right now, this goes, this increases from one, two, three. And then so here, this now has to increase. I can't decrease. I can't do 3, 2, 1, right, because the 2s clash. I can't do 2, 1, 3, because the 3s clash, etc. I have to cyclically increase in my stack. So here I could put, for example, 2, 3, 1, and then here I can do 3, 1, 2. And those are, those are cyclically increasing values. Again, the, if you're skipping, this isn't down 2. This is up 1, because we only have 3 digits to cycle through. All right, so... With that said, that's already pretty interesting. Uh, may I not have ever thought about it that way. Um, what if I have? Let's do let's do this. Let's do one, two, three down a diagonal like this. So we can talk about because it spans both three columns and three rows. We can talk about its cyclic parity in both its band as well as its stack. So what is its cyclic parity in the band? Well, in this case, it's cyclic parity because because we're looking the band cares about vertical. It goes one, two, three. It's got a it's got an increase in cyclic parity. It's got its parity is increasing. Now, what about in the stack? Well, you you read left to right for the stack, and it is also increasing. So if I go do this formation here, it's it's the same cyclic parity in both its band and in its stack. Okay, so what if I go like this, one, two, three, like this? Well, if we look at its band, again, we, we just care about vertical. So three, two, one, that's cyclically decreasing. And if we look at its stack, we only care about how it goes left to right. That's one, two, three, that's cyclically increasing. So it's decreasing for the band and increasing for the stack. And so they have opposite cyclic parities. Um, as each other. So when I when I fill out the stack, I need increasing parities. And when I fill out the band, I need decreasing parities vertically. So now let's take a look at Thor's hammer then. So Thor's hammer actually did have this, had this, had this, had this, and then it was like this. This was Thor's hammer. So I'm going to start by filling out numbers, just so it's clear. I'm going to do 1, 2, 3 like this. So if I have 1, 2, 3 like this, we know for the band, we need to share the vertical cyclic parity. So it has to be a decreasing parity. So I can decrease, and I can just pick one way to decrease. So I can say do 2, 1, 3, for example. That's decreasing. And that you can see that fits in. Now for the stack, I have to match, it, I have to match this uh, vertical well, the, the horizontal cyclic parity, which which affects the stack, right? So horizontally, on in my rows, as I go along this way, I need to match this this one's box one's parity. So if this is one two three, that's increasing. This one also has to increase. So I could do, for example, two three one, and that that is increasing from left to right. 
So now let's look at this Thor's Hammer section. Um, and we can just look at the values to start, and we can see that, that this is a, this is indeed impossible. So here, these twos, uh, actually it's much easier to see that this sees a 1 and a 3, so that has to be a 2. But this also sees a 1 and a 3, that has to be a 2, so clearly something's going wrong here. But what we can do is we can analyze this. We can say, okay, here, again, the stack cares about left to right parity. It's doing 2, 1, 3. So that's decreasing. It went from 2 to 1, and then 1 to 3. That's decreasing. So I also need a left to right decreasing parity. But the box 4, if we look at its vertical parity, so that's got a match for the rest of the band, its vertical parity is 2, 3, 1. So 2, 3, 1, that's increasing. But if you remember, this formation here that we, we had done uh, in other places, it has the same parity for both its uh, stack and its band. But this one is saying we need a decreasing parity, and this one is saying we need an increasing parity. They clash. You can't have both at the same time, not with this formation, and so that's impossible to fill. However, if I were to go like this, if you remember this one, this formation here that we talked about, it has a different parity for its band and stack, so that fits in nicely. So we should be able to fill this. This sees a 1 and a 2, that's a 3. This sees a 1 and a 3, that's a 2. This sees a 2 and a 3, that's a 1. So now what we can do is we can talk about this a bit more generically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with these all gray. Um, and we're going we're gonna to prove, again, Thor's hammer is impossible. So this formation here, we, we just we, we start by picking a parity. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use blue for for one parity and orange for the other. We don't know which parity is which, but one of them's blue and one of them's orange. So I'm gonna use blue for this one's this one's band parity. And we know that its stack parity needs to be the opposite. So its stack parity is gonna be orange. So we just have to remember that this is blue to the right and orange under. Um, and I'll, I'll come up, I'll show some better methods of tracking this in, 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 later in the video, but let's try to, let's try to just keep this in our head. So now this one, this has the same parity. So this has, no matter what, this is going to be blue parity, right? This is going to be blue parity for its, for its band. Now in this formation here, if you remember, it had the same parity between its band and stack. So it's, it's just solid blue. It's blue for both. Now, if we go down to box four here, we know it has to have orange parity for its stack. And again, it's the same parity for its row, because it's the same um, sort of downward sequence that we already went over. And so here, this and, and if, you, if you remember, this is a downward sequence. So th in box 5 now, this downward sequence needs to have the same parity for its band and its stack. But its, its stack is saying to have a blue parity, and its band is saying to have an orange parity, which means that this would have to be a sequence that supports having a different parity in its band and its stack, and it can't because this formation has the same parity in its band and stack. That's a contradiction. This is, this is impossible to fill. So let's talk a bit more generally now and, and about how to recognize these patterns. So first of all, the pattern is only, let, let me actually back up here. The pattern is only valid if it spans all three rows and all three columns, or rather if we're gonna be talking about the band it needs to span all three columns. If we're going to be talking about the stack, it needs to span all three rows. So if it's going to be a formation that is enforcing a specific parity for both its band and stack, it's got to be on in all three rows and all three columns. So for example, this, this may not even deserve a color. Um, this formation here would fit just fine. Um, and we wouldn't cause any problems having the triple here. And it it, it has a, it's going to be orange because it's got to match, because, because it spans um, the three rows, it, it's going to be orange for that reason um, because it's got to match this orange parity, but it doesn't need to inherit the blue for, or it doesn't, it doesn't have a parity, a cyclic parity for the stack because it doesn't span three rows. So we can kind of hide the bad value in one of these two um, if we wanted to. So hopefully that's clear. Um, that So we're going to be talking about formations that span all three rows and all three columns, because those are the ones that are going to be very important. So let's just, let's just work in box five, just because it's central. So we already know this one here. This one here is rising. 
And if I fill 1, 2, 3 here, you can see that for its band, we look top to bottom, it's 3, 2, 1. And for its stack, we look left to right, it's 1, 2, 3. So this formation has an opposite parity from between its band and stack. So now that's going to be true of all rising patterns. And what do I mean by that? Well, this left cell, I can choose three places for it to start. So let's start here. I'm going to use a darker gray here so it's easier to see. So if I put if I put this dark gray here and I want to rise, well, I'd rise to here, but I need to stay in the box. So I'm actually rising to here and then to here. And you can always recognize a rising pattern because there's going to be two that are that are like this. But if you think about it, you're going right. You're always moving to the right. Are you going to move up into the right or are you going to move down into the right? If it's an upward pattern if we move up to the right. So let's actually just fill all three of them here. So we have this one here where we start on the bottom, and then we have this one here where we start here. We rise, rise, and then rise again. You can see this one rises. It would have gone here. That wraps down to the bottom. So these are the three rising patterns. Now what about falling patterns? These are the falling patterns. We can do this, which we saw earlier, or we can start in the middle, and we can fall here, then here, then back up to the top, or we can start in the bottom left, and we can fall like this. And all the falling patterns, if I were to fill um, one, two, three here. Remember the falling pattern has the same parity going left to right as it does top to bottom. Um, that's true of all falling patterns. If I do one, two, three like this, looking left to right on one, two, three, looking top to bottom, I'm three, one, two, which if you look is still a rising pattern because we're going from one to two and then two to three. Um, if we were to start here or three increases to one, right? Because we're cycling around and then one increases to two. Um, and then this one here, if I do one, two, three like this, if I read top to bottom, obviously it's still one, two, three left to right. If I read top to bottom, two, three, one, the two increases to three, the three increases to one. So this is the same parity for its band and stack. And then all the rising ones, I don't need to go through all the examples because you can you can see that yourself. Um, well, I might as well just fill these, right? Um, so if I were to fill these, we are... If I look downwards, one, three, two, that three to two should be obvious that we're decreasing. And two, one, three, two decreases to one, decreases to three. That's a decreasing pattern. Um, and so we're increasing from left to right, and we're decreasing from top to bottom. So these are the three possible patterns that we can do um, that are increasing. So we have three decreasing patterns and three increasing patterns. And all the decreasing patterns have the same parity for the band and the stack, and all increasing patterns have this, have different parity for band and stack. And again, that only applies if we're talking about having that same triple span all three columns for the band or span all three rows for the stack. So what can we do with this? Well, let's start with a really simple example. Let's say I've got one, two, three like this, and let, let's just give this a blue color. And let's say I know that one, two, three have to go somewhere in these three cells. Let, let's just start with that gray. Um, and then let's say that this also has one, two, three in it um, in some way, right? So we know one, two, three is going to go here. We know one, two, three is going to go here. Without even looking at what these have to be, we can sort of imagine what's going to happen. This one, two, three on its stack, it's forcing blue blue parity for this increasing sequence going left to right. But because it's a because it's a rising sequence, we know that it has an opposite pattern, uh, opposite parity for its band. So it's turning the blue, so as we as we turn this corner, it's turning the blue into an orange. And then now for this for the band, the band needs an orange parity. So this vertical one here, this needs to be orange. So I know for a fact that if I were to fill 1 2 3 here without even looking at this box, I know this is impossible. I've broken the puzzle. And we can actually prove that to ourselves because we know one, two, three have to go in these three cells. So what we can do is we can look and say, well, uh, this cell, this sees a one and a three. That needs to be a two. But this cell also sees a one and a three. That also has to be a two. Broken. So, and that'll, that'll happen for all rising sequences. I can do two, three, one. That's still a rising sequence. And we should just have two cells that need to be the same value again. So this, this middle cell sees a two and a three. That has to be a one. This cell sees a 2 and a 3, that has to be a 1. And that'll work for other kinds of rising sequences as well. Any any rising sequence, I could start here, and then here, and then here. Um, how am I going to fill this one? Well, 
This cell here needs to be a 2, it sees a 3 and a 1. But this cell here also sees a 3 and a 1, it needs to be a 2, we're broken. So, and then the other rising sequence, just to sort of be completely convincing here. This is our other rising sequence. We're going to end up with the same problem. This one has to be a 3, it sees a 2 and a 1. This one also sees a 2 and 1, has to be a 3. So hopefully that's clear. So what that means is if I have any kind of rising sequence here of the same 1, 2, 3 that spans both the rows and columns, we're now turning the blue into an orange. This is not an orange sequence, right? It has to be orange, so I need to decrease. So I could do 3, 2, 1, and then this will be easily fillable. So this one, um, in fact, these have, all have two choices the way I filled it. Um, and so this could be a 2, for example. So now uh, this cell sees 2 and 3, it has to be a 1. This has to be a 3, that all fills just fine. Um, and so we can construct um, cycles of 4. Thor's hammer is a cycle of 4, right? If I construct Thor's hammer here, um, I know this is impossible. But I also know a few other sequences are impossible. I know that this downward sequence is impossible. And I also know that this downward sequence is impossible. And I can also rotate these around. As long as this one's still downward, I still am, am impossible. right? I could start here and do this downward sequence. Here, this needs to be a rising sequence. I could, I could rotate that around. I could do this rising sequence, just to pick one at random. And I could leave this one alone, for example. But maybe, maybe we just, for the sake of doing it, I could do this sequence. And this is still Thor's hammer, right? It doesn't look like Thor's hammer anymore. Um, but this is still impossible because we know that, like, we could just start with this box, for example. We, we, have, we have a cycle of four boxes. This one's decreasing. So whatever we pick for, um, and this is maybe where I should start going over the, the way that I would like to think about this or, or denote this. Um, so there's two ways that I could denote this. So the, the first way I played around with does involve multicoloring and a little bit of memorization. But I'll go over that first. So let's analyze this sequence and show that it's impossible using two, two different methods of determining that. And I think the second method's a little better, but maybe you can decide how you want to do it, or you have some other way that you want to keep track of this. But let's let's analyze this. So let's just start with um, with this one here. So what I'm going to say is, in bands, we have two parodies. We're going to have blue and orange parodies. We don't know which is which, but we know they're two different parodies. And then for stacks, we're going to have two parodies, but I need different colors for that. So I'm going to choose green and purple. Um, and I'm doing that to help the colorblind. Some people might choose like two cold colors and two hot colors, for example, like orange and red. But I know a lot of people who watch have trouble distinguishing orange from red. Um, so I'm not going to do that to you. Uh, so I'm going to use green and purple for that. So, But we're, what we're going to say is that blue and green are the same parity as each other and orange and purple are the same parity as each other. So if you remember, we were either an increasing um, cyclical parity or we're a decreasing cyclical parity when talking about reading left to right or top to bottom. And so if we're increasing left to right and increasing top to bottom, that could be a blue green or that could be an orange purple. We don't know which is which, but they're the same increasing cyclical parity. So with that said, let's just pick one for the band. Like it doesn't matter what we choose. We're going to choose blue for the band. And this is a decreasing sequence. And if you remember decreasing sequences, they preserve parity. So I need the same parity for the stack, and that's green. So now let's let's um, let's just go to this box one again, because we're, we're just going to use the same uh, breaking of box five that we have been. Um, so now if we go to box one, we know that it must have the same stack parity. We've already determined the stack parity is green. We have to use green. We're forced to. And this is an increasing sequence. So again, we're forced to use the opposite parity for our band as our stack. The opposite of green for um, the band is going to be orange. Um, and hopefully you, re you remember those colors. I'm sorry if this is a bit confusing. We'll go we'll over a different way of doing this as well. Um, and so now this guy's parity, box 2, must be orange because the, the band parity is orange. And it's a decreasing sequence, so it needs the same parity um, as its band for its stack. That's purple. Purple is the same parity for the stack. And so now let's look at this one. This one, we actually know it's two parities. Its band parity must be blue, and its stack parity must be purple. 
because it inherits purple from here. Remember, purple is for stacks, orange is for bands. And it inherits blue from its band, because blue is for bands and green is for the stacks. Right? So it has to be blue, purple. Well, blue and purple are opposite parities of each other. So this better be an increasing sequence, but it's not. It's a decreasing sequence, thus it's broken. So we've just proven that this is impossible. So if I had, for example, one more cell as an option here for where my triple could go, I know I'm not allowed to make a decreasing sequence, so it must go in these three. This one is not actually allowed to be part of the triple. And then we can move from there and, sol and solve our puzzle. So seems pretty powerful, but it's also very specific. Um, now, most of the time, these cycles are going to be four boxes, but we can actually construct a six cycle. So let, let's do that. Um, so let's just be let's just use these decreasing and increasing just to to be a little bit um, easier to see what we're doing. But again, we can always rotate these um, how we want. Um, and I'm just randomly picking um, these to do here. Maybe I'll do upwards again. So now we want to analyze. Oh, not here. Over here. So now we want to analyze whether this is broken or not. And you can see that this is actually a six um, six box sequence. So we have box one, which will force box three. Box three is going to force box uh, six. Box six will bo force box five. Box five will force box eight. Box eight will force box seven. And then box seven returns in, in our sort of loop back to box one. And so we want to know if this loop is valid or not. And I just randomly picked, so I'm not actually sure yet. So let's analyze it. Let's use, let's use this first method um, that we went over. Then I'll go over the second method, and we'll see which one you guys like better. So let's start in box one. And we just have to start with some parity. So I like to start with the band parity. So let's just start with that being blue. And because we're rising, it needs an opposite parity for its stack. So we'll make that purple. We'll just have to remember that that's purple. But we're going to go across the band. We're forced to be blue for the band. And we're decreasing. So we need a green for the stack here. We're forced to be green from the stack. We're increasing. So we need to be orange for the band. Here, we're forced to be orange from the band. That's already been determined. We're decreasing. So we need to be purple for the stack. Here, we need to be... Um, purple from the stack, um, and then so we're increasing, so we need to be opposite parity for the band, that's blue. So now here, we inherit blue from our band, we inherit purple from our stack, that's blue-purple, those are opposite parities, this better be increasing, and it is, so this ought to be possible to fill. So let's give it a try. And now obviously, um, proving it's possible to fill is easy, proving it's impossible to fill, as we've shown, can be very hard, and takes a lot of bifurcation, so um, let's just, just double check that this is possible to fill. So I'm just going to pick one where I can. Um, so now this sees one and two, and that has to be three, that's two. Let's pick one where we can. This sees one and three, that's two. This is three. Let's pick a one here. This sees one and two, that's three and two. Here, we can't pick one, let's pick two. This sees two and three, that's the one, that's a three. Um, now this one's forced to be one, this one's forced to be three, this one's forced to be two, and yep, we can fill it. So that's good. So now what we should be able to do is show that if I, we can just keep these arbitrarily filled. If instead I had a decreasing sequence like this, it would still have to be blue-purple, right? But blue-purple is not possible for a downward sequence because we need the same parity between them. We can show that this is not possible to fill. So here this sees 1 and 2, so that has to be 3. This one sees 1 and 2 as well, that has to be 3. And this one sees two threes. that could be a 1 or a 2, but it doesn't matter, we've already broken it. So... Um, that's obviously not proving just from filling randomly that that's broken, but you can you we've proven uh, more generally that this um, parity argument works. So we already knew ahead of time which sequences would work and which wouldn't. So that is how you do that analysis. Let's do that analysis again. Um, in fact, let's 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 do it in the broken way just so we can show that it's broken. Um, and I'm going to just keep the same exact sequence here, um, but we're going to analyze it in a slightly different way. So instead of having to memorize two colors for bands and two colors for stacks and how they relate to each other, there's another way we could do this. We could think about how all of these are kind of like L pipes. Anytime you have um, a triple that's placed across both 
all three rows and all three columns. You can think of it as sort of a pipe um, that's going to connect, you know, the box below it to the box to its right. Uh, if you look at box five, it's it's more like a um, a quad junction here where it, it it can connect these boxes together. It can connect these boxes together, but it's always going to be an L-shaped pipe. And when we move along that L-shaped pipe, we're either going to swap flow direction or we're going to preserve flow direction. And so we can sort of remember that across just the intersection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use pen tool here. And unfortunately, on an intersection, I can only mark X's. But what I can do is on a cell, I can mark an O1 or an X. So I'm going to do that. And we're not going to bother coloring anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, we got to start with some flow. So let's say from the bottom here, we're going to be flowing with O's. So I just mark O's on both sides of this. And now this is a rising sequence, so that reverses the flow when it when it turns 90 degrees. So this has to be X's on both sides. And that X is going to affect the entire band, so we can move the X over to here. So we can kind of say the X continues to flow across. And obviously some of these are optional, you don't have to mark all of these. And now we have another 90 degree turn here. So for this 90 degree turn, we're a falling sequence that preserves it being an X. And then here we have a rising sequence, again to go left to right, so when we turn this L, we need to swap our parities. So that changed back to O. We'll swap our flow direction, right? And now again, we're going to be turning 90 degrees. This is a falling sequence, so we preserve the O's. Here we have a rising sequence, so we got to swap the X's when we turn this 90 degrees here. And so now, um, if we look, we can transpose this O down, because it's going to be the same for the whole stack. This needs to, this needs to be an L shape that reverses the flow, that changes the parity. But it's a falling sequence. It's not able to change the parity. Falling sequences preserve the parity, thus we're broken. So I didn't have to color at all. I just needed two symbols to place at borders. Um, and we can actually see, like, if I were to get rid of this here, um, we know this needs to be a rising sequence, but we actually know all of the boxes because we can, we can sort of... Um, Figure that out. Here we've got O's, so this has to be an O sequence. So this has to be, um, this has to be a rising sequence, so they can flip the parity. So I could do, I could do a rising sequence here. Um, this box here, it's getting, it's inheriting X's. So I could, I could put X's on the borders here, and it's inheriting X's from these boxes as well. So when it turns the corner, it's got to preserve the parity. So it needs to be a falling sequence. Here we already said this needs to be rising because it's got an O and an X in it, and then here. It's got an O from the stack, and it's got an O from the band. We can we can completely fill this if we want to. Um, and so this needs to be a falling sequence. And now we've filled this with a valid sequence. And if any of these swapped, um, it would suddenly be invalid and impossible to fill. So hopefully this strategy may work for you, uh, may not. Um, if you can think of another way to do this using, say, the CTC app or F puzzles, um, all ears. Some suggestions were actually to switch to setting mode and place like cosmetic circles or, or colored squares or diamonds or something. Um, I'm not one who wants to be, you know, constantly switching switching to setting mode and F puzzles to do analyses like this. But that certainly would work for some people who might want to do that. Um, in the CTC app, I think pen tool might be the best option. You could also just color these cells two different colors, um, or you can just try to do it in your head. Maybe the more you do this, the more... I don't know how often this is going to come up in puzzles, but if you do need to do the analysis, this is kind of how you do it. And hopefully you can reinvent it from first principles if you forget exactly how it works. Um, so with all that said, um, Philip has actually made another puzzle that makes use of uh, Thor's hammer here. Um, I'm kind of giving a, giving away the, the technique you need. But here is a uh, killer Sudoku. Uh, <coughs> and the... Um, in the description, you can find a link to the puzzle if you want to try it yourself first. I'm going to show the break-in, um, have fun solving it beyond that, um, just to demonstrate how you can uh, use Thor's hammer in a solve like this. Maybe people will get creative and make use of this uh, in other ways. Um, but with this puzzle, this is kind of neat, so I wanted to show this off. So let's start in box one. Um, if we look at these killer cages here, um, they sum to 21. And so our Audis must be 24. And so the only way to make 24 and 3 is 7, 8, 9. Here, 13 plus 8 is also 21. So these have to be 7, 8, 9. You probably see where this is going. 15 plus 6 is also 21. So these have to be 7, 8, 9. And now this is 16. 
So these have to add to 28. The only way to make 28 and 4 is 5, 7, 8, 9. So surprise, surprise. Um, and so now if we do, if we look, if I were to highlight these cells here, let's let's just do our, our uh, critical analysis here. Um, let's use the pen tool. So here um, we have some we have some parity coming in. Let's call that O. And we got to turn the corner and we're rising, so it's got to switch to X. Let's just transfer that X all the way over here. Um, and so this is falling. It's got to stay X. And let's go down here as well. Uh, this is O. We know what it is. It's falling. It's got to stay O. So this O transfers over to here. This X transfers down. This must be a rising sequence or no sequence at all. Um, if I were to use these three cells, then um, that would be a falling sequence and that would break the puzzle. So where can the five go? The five must be in one of these three cells. It cannot be here. This is not a five. We've eliminated that five. And then from here, the puzzle is actually significantly easier if you believe it or not. So we have applied Thor's hammer. You can see this is just a stretched out Thor's hammer. But you, you, could, you could configure the, the cages probably in different ways to do different rising and falling sequences. You get the same result. Um, or you could make one of the, the six sequence ones and be sneaky, um, a six sequence loop. Um, but either way, um, that is how you break into this puzzle. Have fun solving it. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I might as well add a couple hints um, on why this five was useful. Um, if you don't want it, you know, don't watch this part until you've solved the puzzle. But um, if you do get stuck, um, this hopefully will unstick you. This was sort of the sticking point for me. Let's let's clear out all this pencil stuff because we don't need it. Um, so there, there's obvious cages you can fill, but the the interesting thing here is how does how do you fill 14? Um, 14 must be um, either five nine or six eight. That's the only options. So what can what can this 11 be? Well, what what it can't be is five six because that would force this 14 to be actually 17. There's no way that's going to work. So where does 6 go in the row? Well, 6 can't go in a 6 cage. It's not a 7, 8, 9. It's not a 5, 7, 8, 9. It's not in the 11 cage. It's not in the 6 cage. So we have a hidden 6 in the row. Now where does 5 go? Uh, you can't put a 5 in a 6 cage because you have to do 5, 1, 1. There's no way to do that. Um, so 5 can't go in any of these. 5 can't go with the 6 and the 11. Um, 5... Uh, we, you would think 5 would be able to go in the 6 cage, but actually, remember, 5 is limited to these 3, because we have a 5, 7, 8, 9 quad, so we can't go here. And we just removed 5 from here using Thor's hammer, so therefore this must be the 5. It's a hidden 5 in the row. These are no longer 5, and hopefully with this 5 placed, um, you'll have uh, an easier time of solving the rest of the puzzle. Obviously, this is 6, 9, or not 6, 9, it's a 5, 8. Um, and a lot of these other cages are, are pretty forced, so... Hopefully you'll have a, a, an easier time solving from there. So those are all those. And I guess I might as well say, you know, you, you don't have to do, you know, you don't have to have a bunch of these in order for it to be useful. I think I already showed, you know, if you have a blue cycle here and then you've got some kind of, you know, rising sequence here of the same three digits, then no matter where you know as long either the digits if they're going to span the all three columns they're they're gonna have to be orange cycle they're gonna have to be a different cycle than the blue um or they're gonna have to just not span all three columns um in this box here as well as this box here right so um just something to keep in mind if you see that around um you can you can watch out for when you have triples doing that and i'm actually very interested if you encounter a puzzle where it wasn't intended to be a step but you see it and it was useful um please let, let me know i'd love to hear about that um i'm going to be looking for this out in the wild as well and it's probably hard to spot it might be a gimmick who knows but maybe some of these really hard puzzles um that required some advanced technique we could just use uh tri-value autogon logic or thor's hammer logic and um, make quick work of it so let me know how all that goes for you and I hope you enjoyed this follow-up video, and I will see you guys next time.